Hello, you two. I'm Dolores from HR, and I'll be conducting your group job interview today here at the North Pole. You two are the lucky finalists for our permanent position here. Terry, good to see you again. Thank you, Dolores. Good to be here. I'm extremely excited about the possibility of landing a position with your firm. Thank you, Terry. Here's hoping. And hello to you, Tinsel. Merry Christmas, Dolores. Merry Christmas to you, Tinsel. That is the right response. Points to you, buddy. Right, yeah, Merry Christmas. Sure, well, let's get right to it. We have one position open and two very qualified candidates. Oh, good luck. If I don't get it, I sure hope you do. Thanks. I have to say, I hope I get it too. Well, Terry, we'll start with you. Do you have any experience in making toys? That is a great question. Thank you, Tinsel. You're very kind. Right. Well, I created my first yo-yo when I was six. I invented a board game when I was 10 and programmed my first computer game at 16. I went to MIT where I graduated summa cum laude with a major in toy design and a minor in mechanical engineering. Wow, that's impressive. You should hire him. Thank you. And you, Tinsel, do you have any experience in making toys? Me? Gosh, no, I've never done anything like that, but I do make a great hot cocoa. I love hot cocoa. I know, right? Do you use the mini marshmallows? Gotta go, Minnie. The big ones seal in all the heat so you can't sip it. That is an excellent point, Tinsel. Now, Terry, tell me why you want to work here at the North Pole. Well, you guys are a big corporation with a long successful history and strong projected growth. I feel this is a company I, I could help expand and grow with into the next century. Uh-huh, and you, Tinsel? I just love Santa. Me too, Tinsel, me too. Now, what would you say is your biggest weakness, Carrie? My biggest weakness? I guess I have to say I work too hard. First one in, last one out. That's me. Uh-huh. And you, Tinsel? Uh, my biggest weakness is I don't work hard enough, probably. Ha! <laughs> yeah, I'm always getting distracted by singing Christmas carols or wrapping presents or eating Christmas cookies. And then there's the cocoa thing. All excellent points, Tinsel. We value honesty here. Are you kidding? Is there a problem, Terry? Well, no. I just really want to work with you guys. I really want this job. Yeah, it's a great job, isn't it? Wouldn't it be cool if we both got it? You and me, buddy! Sadly, there is only one position open. Either way, you can still be my buddy. Right. But I'd be willing to do anything with this company. I'll start at the bottom. I'll work in the mailroom and- Whoa, 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 mister. Slow down. We have the busiest mailroom in the world. You don't start at the top. No, no, of course not. I didn't mean that. I'm just eager and I think I have the qualifications for the toy maker job. Well, it's my job to des decide who is best for the position. Terry sounds pretty great. I am. And if you take a look at my resume, you can see that. Wow, you have a resume? That's awesome! You don't have a resume? No, never had a job before. Well, Tinsel, if you got the job, how would you- Wait, 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 I'm sorry, but how is Tinsel still being considered for this job? She's got no experience, 
no skills, and no resume. Tinsel has other qualifications. What? Being an elf? You're considering hiring her simply because she's an elf? Not simply. What qualification does she have? She's an inexperienced worker who eats and sings on the job. That's true. I do all that. If you hire this person or elf over me, I will bring a discrimination lawsuit against you guys. I will sue Santa into oblivion. I see. Well, congratulations, Tinsel. We'd like to offer you the job. Really? Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Are you kidding me? Oh, you guys just sealed your doom. I'm going to bring Santa down. I will own the North Pole. Perhaps, but you will never work here. This job isn't about toys or resumes or work experience. It's about love, about giving, about the Christmas spirit, and you have none. You're going to regret. And if you continue acting like this, I will make certain that you are put on the naughty list for the next 10 years. You wouldn't. Try me. I don't care. Who wants to work for a stupid old company like this anyways? I hate you and I hate Christmas. Well, Tinsel, when can you start? Oh, just a second. I'm getting a call from the factory floor. Yes? Wait, what? We're out of hot cocoa. Fear not! I'm on the way! Good morning, everyone, and Merry Christmas. The holidays are upon us, so there's no better time to do a bit of baking. That's why I'm so excited to welcome you to our first ever segment of Brittany Baker's vlog, Baking with Brittany. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Randy. Gee, you're so right about this time being perfect for baking. What better gift to give to someone than something you've made with your own two hands? Exactly. So, Brittany, what are you going to be showing us how to bake today? Well, Randy, I thought we made something that absolutely screams holiday, a pumpkin pie. Oh, I love pumpkin pie. I know. Who doesn't? And what better gift to give to your neighbor or your boss, or even to take to that holiday hostess part, hostess, no, oh, even to take to that holiday party as a hostess gift. Yum, my mouth is watering. Let's get started. Of course. So the first thing we need is pumpkin pie filling. Now you might think you have to make it from scratch, but you don't. Not on Baking with Brittany. You can use the canned kind you'd find in any grocery store right now, like this one. Ah, well, I thought it was right here. Shelly, where's the pumpkin pie filling? I see. Well, turns out we don't have any pumpkin. But not to worry, folks. The holidays are that time of year when sometimes you just need to regroup. Right, Brandy? That's right, Brittany. I can't tell you how many times people have come to my house with gifts and I'm empty handed. What do I do? One year, I dropped a turkey right in front of my guests but I picked it back up, brought it into the kitchen, wiped it off, took it back out saying, so glad I had another turkey in the oven and they were none the wiser. Exactly, you have to improvise. And honestly, does the flavor of the pie really matter as long as it's made with love? The spirit of the holidays. So instead of pumpkin, we'll simply make an apple pie, yum. Apple pie with some warm milk is my daddy's favorite. You don't? Well, why not? What do you mean you didn't have 
enough time to get to the store. Ah, well, I guess we don't have any apples either. But that's okay. Apples are so autumnal. What is really wonderful at this time of year is a chocolate fudge pie. So thick and creamy and chocolatey. And you can pair it with the darn nuts to get that salty sweet thing. You read my mind, Randy. Okay, let's get this filling made. <gasps> you overfilled this, didn't you? I asked you to keep the containers only three quarters full. What do you mean this isn't your job? Of course it's your job. No, I couldn't get to the market, could I? I had to prepare for the show. <sighs> Randy, people this time of year can really push your buttons. People can live next door to you and act like they want to work for you, but then act as if they don't work for you. They act as, as if it was their idea to create this show, but it was your idea to create this vlog. Uh, uh, Brittany, the recipe? Oh, right, of course. I was just demonstrating the importance of the holiday spirit and the importance of forgiveness. Always a good thought. Good. Now let's get on with the preparation, shall we? The next thing we need is sugar. Oh, for pity's sake, how can we not have sugar? This is a baking show. We have to have sugar. Let me guess. We don't have any flour either. Oh, we do have flour. Just nothing to sweeten it with? Well, that's just great, isn't it? No sugar, no apples. Why do this vlog in the first place? Why not just become an accountant like my mother wanted me to? But no, I had to do something creative. I had to do something I love. Well, you know what I don't love? Baking. In fact, it's kind of hard. You know that? Hard. Recipes come out different every single time. And the baking shows, they make it seem so easy that anyone can do it. Well, not everyone can. You got that? There's a lot that goes into this crap. And the prep, the hours it takes to get everything ready, and then your oven isn't properly calibrated, so your food comes out burnt or dry or inedible. Is that your fault? No, but people look at you like you just killed their puppy because they didn't get the perfect after dinner sweet. And then what if someone is gluten intolerant or can't have sugar? So you go through all this work and they can't even eat it anyways. You know what? Just go buy a pumpkin pie. They're really cheap and everybody likes store-bought anyways. So does that mean you won't be baking, Brittany? That's right, Randy. No baking. All right, then. Uh, there you have it. Baking with Brittany. Uh, bye for now. Whatever. Hello, hello, hello there. I'm Chet Winkton. Welcome back to Who's Going Home, the show where customers have a chance to meet their potential Christmas trees and have a short trap for their side. Who's Going Home? Our first contestant tonight is Binky Bevins. Hi, Chet. I can't believe I'm on national TV. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. So you excited to be here, Binky? You bet, Chet. This is my first ever Christmas tree. You're Jewish? No, I mean my own tree for my own apartment. Well, that's exciting. Are you ready to meet your potential Christmas trees? You bet, Chet. Tree number one, coming at you from all the way across the Atlantic, it's Scotch fir. Oh, hello. Look there, young me lost. It's good to see you. Hello. Tree number two, it's... Noble fur. Greetings and salutations. 
Wow, that is noble. Tree number three, it's Doggy. Excuse you, I'm a fur. Douglas fur. You called all the other trees by their proper names, so how come I have to go by a nickname? How is that fair? Hello, Dougie. It's Douglas, come on! And tree number four, it's Virginia Pine. How y'all doing? I'm just as tickled as a fig in hooding to be here. Hello, Virginia. Excuse me, is she pre-flocked? I didn't know we were, we were allowed to come flocked. Can I speak to a manager? Oh, Dougie. It's Douglas. Okay, Binky, time for your first question. Three, number one, what is your ideal place in my apartment? Uh, well, any place in the joint would be perfect for the likes of me. I have no idea what he just said. No one ever does. That's not true. Excuse me, are we allowed to have an accent? Nobody told that we could have an accent. Is that fair? Three number two, what is your perfect Christmas Eve? The festivities being when the sun sets and you turn on the lights. Did you know in the old days, before the invention of electric lights, that candles were used? All very majestic. Sounds like it. Tree number four. Excuse you, I'm three. Can she just skip me? Is that fair? How many presents can fit under you? Well, aren't you just the sweetest thing ever for asking? Darling, you can trim my lower branches if you need a scoosh more room. In fashion, hemlines go up and down, and I'd be just punched pleased to be your tree. I could be pleased as punch or eggnog. I could be thrilled as cocoa if I got the chance. You're not going to give me a chance, are you? Binky, you have time for one more question. Three, number one, what is your long-term goal? Uh, well, what? What do you want to do after Christmas? I didn't can. Three, number two, same question. I haven't given any thought to the future. Perhaps I should invest some time to thinking about it. Three, number four. Again, what happened to three? Well, I don't rightly know, sugar. I do know that tomorrow's another day, but we don't know what it'll bring. We told we don't we haven't told what happens after. Ooh, I know. Dougie? It's Douglas, and I know what happens. We get all decorated up, have a few great weeks before Christmas. Christmas Day is the bomb. Then we get hauled to the curb and chucked in the trash. Oh my gracious! Is that the truth of it? Ah, Is Is that true? Well, uh, I don't want to hurt anybody. No, it's what we live for what we were born for. You know, Chet, I think I'm going to go with an artificial tree this year. Is that your final choice? It is, Chet. Thank you for the opportunity. Ooh, contestants, I'm afraid nobody's going home. Thanks a lot, Dougie. I'll keep blasting knob job. You've shattered my dreams, Douglas. How is this my fault? It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. That's our show for today, folks. Tune in next for Who's Under the Mistletoe, brought to you by Candy Cane Lip Gloss. We are back in ho ho ho, what an upset. You can say that again, Sid. Ho ho ho, what an upset. <laughs> I have to say, in all my years covering this event, I've never seen competitors of this caliber. These are true champions. The commitment, the determination, they're all so good. It's hard to know who will make the playoffs. 
Take Susie from Des Moines. When you look at that form. The way she's putting color with color. It's pure artistry. But is it enough to put her into the finals? That is the question. It's Christmas Eve. If she's going to make a showing, tonight is the night. She came so close last year. But when her Grandpa Joe brought in those gift bags, it totally threw off her game. That's the thing about this competition. It can all change on a dime. We've seen young upstarts like Melinda, who came all the way from Montreal. She lost her way the minute the oversized box came in. It was just too big to fall under the tree. It was so sad to see a player with such promise crumble under the pressure. But this, this Susie's just incredible. Wait a second, Vince. Is that six boxes she's stacking? I think it's a record. Nope. That was Amber back in 06. She took time. She took down Forrest with a nine box tower. That's right. And what a season that was. Well, if this continues, I think we may see some sim similar work tonight. It's all in perspective, isn't it, Vince? It is, Sid. It is. And the lack of perspective could be a death now for some of these players. They begin with a strong Russell, pulling out the present, organizing them into color, then boom, they fall short. Like Joey back in 08. Poor kid just had to shake the box. He panicked, Vince. Shaking the box. An instant disqualification. Sad. Bro, well, yes. present wrestling can take its emotional tool. How do you put them back in the way we haven't seen all season? Exactly. Color, size, recipient. We've seen all those techniques. But it's the unique showings that can really put a player on the map. Oh, sure. I'm surprised more of our competitors haven't cracked. Well, they're well-trained. Look at Susie here. She learned it from her mom, who was a champ three years running. Mom learned it from her mom, who was never quite a champ, but made her showing nonetheless. Susie is a legacy competitor. Let's hope she delivers. I think she's up to the challenge. Let's check in with her and see where she's at. Susie? Yes, Sid? The fans would like to know how you are feeling right now. Excited, scared, hopeful. I've got all the feels, Sid. We've been told to go on bold this season. That's right, Vince. Usually I draw out a map of where I want the presents to go under the tree, and but not this year. I'm just digging in and letting my eye guide me. That's crazy. Well, after last year when Papa brought in those gift bags, I needed or I knew I needed to do something new, something not seen. But to completely change up your style? It works for Rocky. Well, we know the fans are rooting for you. That means a lot, Vince. Ta-da! Oh, wow, that's quite a rustle. Thanks, Vince. I'm pretty happy with it. The artistry, the beauty, it's perfection the level you hit. It's pretty dope. So what now, Susie? Some photographs? A judge's ruling? Yeah, nope. Wow, she's going in again. What a champ. Oh, it's Christmas after all. Gotta get in as much rustling as possible before we open. Exactly, let's leave her to it. What do you say we go to Linda from Loma Linda? I heard her parents are already hiding Easter eggs, starting her training early for the upcoming spring meets. Thank you, Judge, for creating this formal hearing. My client has been delivered a great disservice. I object. What do you mean you object? We haven't even started yet. You were grandstanding. I was presenting the case. Nuh-uh. Was so. <laughs> Enough. This isn't a trial. This is a hearing. And I'd like to hear all the evidence on 
Billy Thompson of Laughed Key Lane versus the North Pole's naughty and nice list. Billy Thompson has committed not one, but two infractions of the naughty nice ruling of 2003. In subsection 1224, it clearly states hitting siblings violates the naughty nice ruling of 1972, whereby older brothers may not pound their little sisters for any reason. There's extenuating circumstances, Your Honor. She took his blue eyes, white dragon. Dad Carl, you make condition. I was in a tweet before. Just a minute, Billy. We'll get to your side of the story. Billy was to play with Max in the Brave New World comic book store seasonal championship. Without that card, he was toast. Is that true, Billy? Yes, you are. I asked for three times to give it back. I even said, please. You see, he even said, please. I object. On what grounds? We only have Billy's word on that. How do we know he said, please? You, you can ask my sister. I'd like you to submit this crayon dragon evidence, Your Honor, signed by Billy's sister. Duly noted. You can clearly tell by the big head that this is Billy. I do have a big noggin, George. And that, and this is Billy's sister. Objection. How do we know that that was Billy's sister? She's petting a unicorn. Who else would be petting the unicorn? That is a unicorn, isn't it, Billy? You, yes, you wanna. But that's not the only infraction, is it, Billy? Where were you on the night of September 25th? I don't remember. You don't remember watching the cartoon marathon? The cartoon marathon you had waited three weeks to watch? The cartoon marathon, which you skipped your baseball game, a game where you're going to play shortstop to watch? Okay, I do remember. Oh, and did you or did you not refuse to take out the trash? Y yes, but... Making your mother, who had just come home from work, take it out? It was the last five minutes of the episode. Objection. The, the prosecutor is not letting my client answer the question. Go ahead, Billy. In your words, tell us what happened. It was the last five minutes of a cliffhanger. And when you're doing a math fine, you don't want to go out of order. It'll screw up with the seasons. So you didn't do your chores? No, ma'am. But I did say I saw we and promised to clean up the dog poop for the whole next week. I see. You see. He said he was sorry. Not only is that, he's going to do the most heinous of the chores. Cleaning up Kona's poop. Billy, I need to ask you a question, and I want you to be honest with me. Yes, you want to? Did you say you were sorry because you were really sorry? Or did you say you were sorry because you knew you'd already broken an infraction and knew that this would put you on the naughty list? Well, first that's why, but... You see, he admits to his own lack of remorse. And according to this... But that's when I saw how disappointed my mom was me. And that's why I decided to do extra crime. But you weren't initially sorry. No, ma'am. You see, not sorry, Judge. I rest my case. I understand. Defense, do you have anything you would like to add? I believe people change. My client saw the error of his ways and put him on the night of this movie mistake and a corruption of justice. I object. Well, I object to you. I objected first. So you say... Enough. I've made my ruling. The issue here isn't whether or not Billy belongs on the naughty list. The law clearly states that we cannot hit our sisters no matter what they've done. Or do our chores. Or do our chores. Hey, quit it. Hey, quit it. I'm gonna tell.
I'm gonna tell. Stop! Stop! Silence in my chambers. Clearly, this case has brought out the emotional turmoil we all face throughout the year. So the question we must ask ourselves is not whether or not the act of naughtiness is the crime. That's clearly stated. But was the intent to be naughty? And I believe Billy did not have intent. Who wouldn't want to watch the cartoon marathon in its entirety? It's the bomb. Right. And since the holidays are a season of forgiveness, I'm going to let Billy off. Billy, I'm taking you off the naughty list. But it's important you learn from your mistakes. When we don't learn from them, we repeat our mistakes. I've warned you, Anna. I won't do it again. Good. Then perhaps it is in the spirit of forgiveness that you two can put down your differences and be friends. I guess you're right. She's only doing what she thought was right. Friends? Sure. Ah, peace at last. And if peace can happen here, Perhaps there's hope for us all. Billy, you are free to go. Thank you, Yuana. Next case. We have Pickle versus Fido, the family dog. The dog tried to lick my client. It's a dog. My client isn't real. It's a decorative pickle. Can somebody give me a cup of cocoa? I have a feeling this is going to be a very long night. Good evening, North Pole. I'm Holly Evergreen, and this is a nightly news for this Christmas Eve. And our top story of the night, Santa is out on his rounds, a little ahead of schedule, and is currently traveling the Olympic Ocean. Is that right, Chip Blizzard? That's right, Ollie. Santa, Santa and his reindeer team made his last checkpoint just over an hour ago. He and the reindeer are zipping over to North America as we speak. We'll keep you updated as information comes in. In other news, Mrs. Claus recently published her 647th cookie cookbook. Look out for that under your Christmas tree this year. And six penguins waddle into the workshop today. Managers are trying to find their mother, but since all penguins look exactly alike, they aren't having much luck. Speaking of luck, let's take a look at the wet at the weather with our weather girl, Brandy Pudding. Brandy? Thanks, Chip. Well, the weather outside is frightful, but it should clear up by midnight. Until then, we'll just have to let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Back to you, Holly. Thanks, Brandy. Okay, it's over to Sports with Frost McFlurry. What up, my peeps? Last night was the Snowball Fight Championship where the Donner Dragons upset the highly favored Vixen Vipers for the title. Way to go, Dragons! We had to cancel this year's Penguin Bowl when all, every other team couldn't decide which Penguin belonged to which team. As we were just saying, Penguins look all alike. You know, Holly, let's take a look from the latest from the Reindeer Games. Sorry to interrupt, Frost, but we have some breaking news. We're going to our ace reporter on the streets, Giggles Garland. Giggles? I'm here, Chip. We have some disturbing news. North Pole's air traffic control has lost contact with Santa. Last seen over the Atlantic, air traffic control reports they lost all communication with Santa just over seven minutes ago. What does that mean? No one knows, Holly. There have been no visual sightings either. Hang on. I'm being told we're going live to air traffic tower chief, Jolly Jingles. Tinkles, I want the last known coordinates. Toffee, give me your trajectory from Santa's registered flight plan. And somebody keep trying Santa's cell phone. Jolly, Giggles Garland for North Pole News. What can you tell us about Santa? I can't talk now. We have an emergency. I need a map of all the islands in the Atlantic. Cookie, get me a trajectory from Santa's registered flight plan. Oh, looks like I picked the wrong week to give up eggnog. Is it true you've lost communication with Santa? It's true, Giggles, but we don't know anything yet. It could just be the weather. I don't think so, Jolly. The forecast is clear up and down the New England seaboard. Could be a mechanical failure. 
You mean a problem with the sleigh? Like I said, we don't know anything yet. But you don't have any contact with Santa? That's correct. Somebody get me a sat nav hookup stat. Looks like I chose the wrong week to give up cookies. Does this mean that Santa is? Don't say it. Could Christmas be canceled? We don't know anything yet. But if Santa is? Don't, don't say it. Christmas could be canceled forever. I want a camera drone launched now! Looks like I chose the wrong week to stop sniffing candles. Ah, uh, that's the good stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, elk and reindeer, we are facing the unthinkable. Santa and the entire reindeer have been lost over the Atlantic. This is a very somber night. A night that will live in infamy. Silent night. Holy night. Wait a sec. I might have something. Somebody amp the voltage on Tower 3. This is North Star 1 calling Big Red. Big Red, come in. We've got him. Yay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, elf and dream deer, we have a confirmation. Santa is fine. I repeat, Santa is just fine. That was a close call, Holly. And radar confirms Santa is now over the United States. Well, that was a broadcast for the history books. Luckily, Christmas is right on schedule. Another happy ending, Chip. Well, that is it from all of us here at North Pole News. We wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. All right, students, class is in session. Welcome back to Remedial Angels 101. I need everybody to sign in when I call your name. Frank? I'm here, Miss Webster. Hi, oh, hi, I got here 20 minutes early and I've been waiting. Thank you, Frank. Hope? I'm here, Miss Webster, and can I just say how much I loved yesterday's class? And I like your hair that way. And the sound of your voice is so soothing. Thank you, Hope. You still owe me homework, though. Dang it. Oh, whoops. Did I just say a swear word? I didn't mean to cuss. I would never cuss in your class, because you're like the greatest teacher ever. Still need the homework. Charity? 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 Charity, sweetie, you have your mic muted. Your mic, unmute your mic, sweetheart. Unmute your mic, your mic. I had a cat named Mittens. Yes, you did. We all remember you telling us. Over and over and over. He was a cat. Bubba? Bubba, I know you're here. I saw you sign in. Fine. Yeah, I'm here. Whatever. Oh, Miss Webster, Miss Webster. Yes, Frank? Bubba has his camera turned off again. Yes, I'm aware of that, Frank. Bubba, we talked about this. Turn your camera on. Thank you, but what are you wearing? Oh, Miss Webster, Miss Webster. He's wearing devil horns. We all see that, Frank. Bubba? Fine. It was a joke. Nobody here can take a joke. I have a joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? I don't know. I forgot the rest. All right, students. Finals are coming up, and I'm deeply concerned that none of you has earned your wings yet. I don't need wings. Wings are for dummies. All angels need wings, Bubba. 
and it's my job to make sure you all earn yours. And we will, because you're like the greatest teacher in the history of history. Still need that homework, Hope. Dang it. Let's review the basics. Can anybody tell me how an angel gets their wings? Bubba? When a bell rings or whatever, who cares? A bell indicates when an angel gets their wings, not how. They earn their wings by doing good, by showing compassion and helping others. Now, can anyone tell me why nobody in this class has earned theirs? Because we haven't helped others? Big whoop. People are idiots. Forget them. Do you think Mittens has wings? Is, is he an angel? Mittens was my cat. We know. Yeesh. Oh, Miss Webster, Miss Webster, Bubba has his camera turned off again. Bubba. Fine, I'm on. You shouldn't put your finger up there. The doctor says that's why I get so many nosebleeds. Students, for whatever reason, you are all stuck as remedial angels. I'm sure it's not your fault, Mrs. Webster. What, with you being such a great teacher and all? Best teacher ever. Homework. Dang it. You all have the potential to be great angels. You just need to stop thinking about yourselves and do something nice for someone else. Nice? I've been giving you compliments all day and you just keep saying homework. I am being nice. And I keep telling you when everyone else is doing something wrong. That's nice. I don't do anything wrong. You know it doesn't have to be huge. I'm not asking you to save the world or save a life. Sometimes you can change someone's life with one little thing, one good deed, one kind word. That's all it takes. So what can you do to be kind today? Mittens would sleep in my room. Mittens was my cat. We know. Nobody cares. Stop blabbing on about your stupid, dumb old cat. Bubba! What? I didn't do <laughs> nothing. It's okay, Charity. Bubba didn't mean it. <laughs> it's okay, Charity. Don't cry. It's okay. Charity, can you tell me about Mittens? Did he like tuna? Tuna was his favorite food. Did he eat it right out of the can, or did you guys have to smash it up with a fork? Smash it. We had to do that for my grandpa, but he wasn't a cat. <laughs> and his name probably wasn't Mittens. What color was Mittens? Orange with stripes. He looked like a big old lump of marmalade. Did he like to play with yarn? All day if you'd let him. He sounds wonderful. He must have made you very happy. He did. He really, really did. I bet you made him really happy, too. You think? I'm sure of it. Hope? Yeah? Pass. Hey, my wings! Oh, was that Hope? She got her wings? I'm so happy for her. Frank, pass. Woohoo! Never had a stupid old cat. I did have a dumb old dog. Really? What was his name? Buckets. Buckets? Ha, oh, that's a silly name. I know. It's not a cool name like Mittens. I named her myself. I know. Cool name. Bubba, it really is that simple. All right, awesome wings. Did they all get their wings? Yes, Charity. Good, they deserve them. They liked mittens. You must have really loved her. I love everything, especially you, Mrs. Webster. I even love Bubba. I know, Charity. That's why. Whoa, I'm an angel! Yes, sweetheart, you are. You all are. With practice, it really is so simple to be kind to others. Class dismissed.
and Merry Christmas, everybody.